so the 2020 Game Awards happened and they fucking sucked. For those not in the know, the Game Awards is essentially like the Oscars, but for video games. And just like the Oscars, you don't need to be the best actor to win. You don't have to have the best movie to win. You just gotta be popular and have a lot of money. Oh, and aside from the Game Awards, they also have game reveals there as well. Which is also the only reason anyone comes to these shit shows. Because aside from that, the whole award thing is kind of boring and dull and I really don't give a shit. And there's just wasn't a lot of interesting stuff this year. And I will be talking about the stuff that made me a bit interested this year. But aside from that, I'll also be talking about the whole Last of Us 2 winning so many awards. Oh shit, it's time for a new Smash character. Who's it gonna be? I bet it's gonna be Fortnite, dude. Oh wait, never mind. They did one that made fucking sense. And, uh, and, uh, ooh. Ah, uh, look at that, uh, that, uh, that alternate skin. Mmm, that's a snack! And oh boy, it comes out this December? Surely this moment won't be undermined by something shitty Nintendo did. Oh yeah, just days prior, you know. Nintendo took a big old shit on a tournament because they decided, hey, we still want to have tournaments this year. Let's do it online with this little thing we, little little program we have. And Nintendo went like, I don't like that. I don't, I don't like you using my intellectual property like that. Y'all bitches having fun? Not on my fucking watch. Thank you, Nintendo, for canceling an event that is just people having fun. And instead of doing the logical thing and promoting it and getting good publicity, you decided to do the exact opposite. Kindly. Eat a bag of dicks, Nintendo. The Game Awards this year had about 20 game reveals, and most of them were non-interesting. There's a few indie titles, obviously. Artsy farsy stuff, not my thing. Nothing that really looked fun or grabbed my attention aside from a few things that I'll talk about later. But overall, it feels like they couldn't really show off anything big. Most of the announcements are kind of like, smaller deals and even the bigger ones like mass effect you know, which i'll talk about later didn't really show enough information but hey that could just be me maybe someone else looked at these games and went like fuck yeah i'm hyped for the next few games but personally for me i didn't fucking give a shit about most of the game reveals okay okay so so this trailer has four people Hunting down zombies, killing them. There's a big bunch of zombies coming. Holy shit! Is this Left 4 Dead 3? Valve's already releasing a new game all fucking ready? Holy fucking shit! I, I'm not the biggest fan of Left 4 Dead. I mean, I played 2, it's not my thing, but... Hey, this is a big reveal! Oh my god, oh my god, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit, it is a... Oh, oh. Okay. Okay, okay, back me up on this. I'm not the only one that saw this trailer and immediately went like, Hey, this might be Left 4 Dead 3, which is exciting because Valve never puts a 3 at the end of any of their game titles. However, this was made by Turtle Rock Studios, which also made the Left 4 Dead series. So this is obviously a spiritual successor to that game. So basically, this is a spiritual successor, which is kind of like a sequel, except it's not connected to Left 4 Dead. It has nothing to do with Left 4 Dead but it keeps up the gameplay and it evolves from it. And of course, it's made by the same team. It's good to see that they finally get to make a semi-sequel to their most popular series. But like I mentioned earlier, I wasn't a big fan of Left 4 Dead 2, just kind of too hectic for me, and you know, I, I kind of like my games to be a bit slower, and you know, Left 4 Dead 2 is a bit too much. Maybe I'll stream it later and try to, you know, get into it more, but for right now, I'm not too hyped for this game. I just like the fact that it kind of looked like a new Left 4 Dead game, and I wanted to point out it's a spiritual successor. I've never seen an Evil Dead movie, yet I like the concept enough that where I, I, I kind of get excited any time I see something Evil Dead related. And I, I really want to get into this because it looks like a thing I would like. You know, it's it's a horror movie, but it's got some wacky parts to it. 
But one of the major reasons I kind of like the Evil Dead series, despite never seeing it, is because it has one of my favorite actors, the narrator for the Spider-Man 2 video game tutorials. So when I heard the voice of my favorite narcissistic tutorial man, I got very excited. And they did show a bit of gameplay, so I'm not too mad about how the trailer barely showed jack shit. This is one of the few games that, if I have the money and I've heard good things about it, I'll definitely get it. But if it turns out to be a supposed cash grab, then I'll just pass on it. Also, on an unrelated note, I took one of the scenes from Evil Dead and made it into a Mentos commercial, like a long while back. There's a link to that in the description below. Please go watch that. It's super good and funny. At this point, Fortnite is essentially the Funko Pops of video games. You see, what Funko Pop does is they take popular characters, they take out all the soul out of them to make these cheap little figures. No matter the character's origin, they will be made into cute little figures that have no personality at all and are just here to make money. Just like how Fortnite will take out all the personality out of a character, you know, just to put him in the game, make money. Oh, yeah, they, they, they are very similar, fuck. And their ongoing plan to essentially make Fortnite the pop culture Smash Brothers, they added Halo Man. They also had a segment where the characters from Red vs. Blue got to meet Fortnite Ninja, the main meat die, die inside a whole freaking lot. And I was looking at the chat for the Game Awards, and, uh, and, and a lot of people acted as if the show ended a long while ago. It didn't. I'm in the opinion that Red vs. Blue was a very good show, very good comedy show. And then it started taking itself seriously, and the more it did that, the more it kind of went like, uh, no thanks. I came to see a comedy show, I do not care about the very complex lore of Red vs. Blue. It was interesting at first, but it outstayed as welcome. <music> Evil West shows a problem with these kind of game reveals. Yeah, they're all nice, this game looks interesting, but it's, uh, this game reveal is just missing one vital thing. Actual fucking gameplay. A cinematic trailer tells me fucking nothing about the gameplay. You know, the most important thing when it comes to a game. It could be argued that cinematic trailers are fine when they're talking about the story and there already is a gameplay trailer to go with it, similar to what Back for Blood did. And it could be argued that cinematic trailers are great for sequels that are in early development. Evil West is a new IP and all it shows that it could be a shooting game, which might incline people to think, oh, it's a first person shooter, but it can also so easily be a top down shooter and I fucking hate those. I was really hyped from this trailer because it looked interesting, but the moment they didn't reveal any gameplay, I immediately went like, well, no game, no hype. Probably one of the weirdest things to see here was Mass Effect. Well, kind of see Mass Effect. They just said that there'll be another one. This is kind of weird because even though I've never played Mass Effect or Mass Effect Andromeda, I did hear a lot of shit about Mass Effect Andromeda not doing too well. So I assumed that it having shit the bed so hard, it wouldn't be continued. Hell, it's kind of weird seeing Bioware be allowed to make games at all after the whole failure of Anthem. I guess EA was merciful. Let's just hope that EA actually gives the people at Bioware enough time to actually make this game. Yet again, knowing how scummy EA is, by the time this game comes out, we'll have like a hundred horror stories about the development of the new Mass Effect. And here we go, the most controversial part of the whole thing, The Last of Us 2. Now, let me make it clear, I'm not some incel that got pissed off because they decided to put some lesbian representation in the game. Nor am I some whiny fanboy that looked up to Joel even though he was a piece of shit and a monster. And I'm not gonna go on a spree condemning The Last of Us Part 2 because to be fair, it does have some pretty solid gameplay. However, it's not Game of the Year material. It has so far won the most rewards out of any video game on the Game Awards. And as someone that played the game, I'll be fair and admit that it did deserve a few awards. Yes, Laura Bailey does deserve best performance. She did a good job. 
And the best audio design, yeah, I played the game and it had really good sound effects that made every punch and every shot feel good. And Game Award for Innovation and Accessibility, yeah, there was actually a lot of accessibility features. I even used a few because, you know, there's some points in the game that weren't great. It's rather the map design was bad or I'm an idiot, I kind of needed help, and luckily there was a navigation thing that was there to help me. But when it comes to its other awards, I just don't see it. When it comes to best action game, I think Miles Morales is a much better game. Sure, I haven't played it, but if it's anything like the first one, then yeah, it's definitely better than The Last of Us 2. And before anyone says, well, Miles Morales obviously didn't win because it didn't change the gameplay enough. Obviously, no, because Last of Us 2 suffers from the same problem. In fact, since I played, I could definitely say it suffered from not changing the gameplay enough. Also, best narrative. Unless every other nominee essentially got monkeys on typewriters to do the story, I very much doubt that. It's very slow paced to the point where it hurts the story, and there's just a lot of things in The Last of Us 2 that doesn't make any fucking sense. But if there's any award it definitely did not deserve to win, it's Best Game Direction. Best Game Direction, my fucking ass. If you make your developers go through crunch just to get the game finished on time and there's still multiple delays, guess what? That's not good game direction. That's horrible game direction. If your game direction was so good, you wouldn't try to force people to not talk about that said game direction. Also, almost committing a crime should immediately exclude you from winning Best Game Direction. Also, you definitely Definitely don't win best game direction when you fire someone for filing a sexual harassment complaint. You see, the thing is, if the Game of Wars was just boring, I wouldn't be bitching about it right now. But the fact that not only is it fucking boring, but it's fucking shameful, fucking disgusting that they would reward this type of behavior from Naughty Dog. The Game of Wars essentially ignored all of the stuff the, all the horrible things that happened with the development and went like, yeah, here you go, you win the award for best game development even though you treat your employees like shit. At best, Naughty Dog needs a severe change in management for what's fucking happened, and at worst, they shouldn't even be a developing studio with the amount of insane bullshit that's happened, the amount of corrupt and evil bullshit that happened during the development of this game, and probably other games as well. They shouldn't be awarded for their shitty acts. They should be punished, but you fucking awarded them. For the people that are in charge of the game awards, Fuck you. But if there's someone out there that deserves to be awarded, it's the person who made the thumbnail for this video. Big shout out to Demungami. Be sure to check out their Twitter linked down below. Please give them a follow and some positive attention as well. This has been Deviant Crow, and I'll see you all next time. Thank you for watching the video, and if you liked it, be sure to like and subscribe. Also, check out these links. If you want to tip me, you could go check out my Ko-Fi. If you want to vote for the next video, go to my Twitter. If you want to get some merch with my face on it, go to my merch store. And if you want to get to watch videos early while supporting the channel, go check out my Patreon. Also, the artist that made the OCs in this video is not me. It is Benny Bunny. So go check him out on Twitter. Also, feel free to come down to my Discord with the link down below. New videos are uploaded every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And don't forget to love yourself. <laughs>